Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Present Her powered by The Beauty Co. In the first episode, we had Alison Mitchell share her story and we are glad you liked it. Please like, share and subscribe to the Women's Creek Zone channel. Today, we have an engineer turned anchor who is a prime face for NBA on Sony Sports in India. She has also presented Kabaddi before with Star Sports and has been a World Cup host with the ICC. Yes, it's none other than Radhima Patak. Hi Radhima, how's it going? Uh, back from Australia after the 2020 World Cup. And I guess your quarantine has got extended to lockdown number 5. Yes, it has, yes. But uh, yeah, living with my parents, so I'm still living a very comfortable life. Um, and learning a lot of new things, especially in this whole process that all of us have gotten digitized. So I've been hosting shows online. So this is an altogether new skill that you need to develop. And uh, trying to set up my own studio today itself, I bought myself a ring light. So yeah. Okay, so it's been, uh, I guess you're running a quiz show every Monday. You have done a lot of live sessions. Uh, what exactly is going behind the scenes? And you have hosted a lot of shows for Sony also. There's been Ellis Perry, there's been Alisa Healy, Pat Cummins in there. So what exactly is going on in the background? Well, in the background, uh, if you talk about sports with Chris Ritz, and that applies for uh, all the shows that I host with Tony as well, is uh, studying. I mean, sports quiz with Ritz used to like research your questions. Uh, and my parents are my biggest critique. Whenever my uh, show's on air, they would say something like, okay, the questions weren't great today. Or you shouldn't have asked this. Or you could have asked something else. And same, same goes with uh, everything that I'm doing with Tony. They would say that, okay, today energy was less. Or, you know, you could have done this better. So, my parents are my biggest critic. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, behind the scenes is uh, trying to first of all set up a studio, as you can see, w what works the best. Uh, got a lot of help from my uh, uh, people at Sony, my uh, friends, colleagues, my bosses, everybody. Um, and uh, understanding light, understanding position of how the camera is supposed to be. So, I'm my own uh, cameraman, makeup artist. Everything. So, it's interesting. So, it's getting interesting, but I don't see that was interesting 10 years back when you were doing engineering. Uh, you had taken a job. Of course, uh, to people who don't know, she's a gold medalist. Uh, and uh, post doing engineering, uh, you took up a job. Uh, and you have done a lot of things before actually landing up uh, in this role. How's, how, how was that and how is it now? So I'd say that my time in engineering was actually pretty interesting but it all started before I hit engineering. Uh, I taken, uh, I had gone to a marine engineering college and then you know I took a drop. So in that period I uh, you know worked with uh, Radio Mirchi and uh, that's where I actually trained my skills. I always wanted to be in front of the camera or the mic. And then uh, engineering happened during the engineering. Many big people who lost PT came in with two exams. And every exam was one month before. So that was together for four months. So for four months, it was four months. You have to do every eight months to do everything that you want to do. So then I participated in a lot of debates, text tempos, uh, did a lot of voiceovers, hosted events. I participated in a lot of college fests in which, you know, uh, unknowingly or knowingly, I was kind of enhancing every skill that I'm using now. So that happened. Um, post engineering, I got campus hired and I was working with an American firm. And uh, well, I, it, it didn't really, that's not really something I wanted to do. So I was there for one and a half years, still pulled it off for one and a half year. I quit that. And uh, because during engineering, I had become like, I had a really good social network in China. So I went to this person to actually ask him for a job while I was applying for my MBA in Harvard. So, um, not just Harvard actually, I met a lot of uh, other uh, uh, US universities. So, um, I asked him for a job and he said, sure, I'll offer you a job, but you know, you really have to help me out. After a week, we do this particular uh, tournament 
this is a cricket tournament of the Pune club and uh, we're looking for an anchor and mc and, you know who could also commentate on cricket she's not just supposed to come and like uh just to be mc bitch she's supposed to know a little bit of cricket as well so would you be able to do it and uh, you have to do it if you want this job <laughs> i was like okay so when i came back for to my mother regarding cricket because she is a great fanatic she uh, taught me a little bit of cricket showed me the path as to where and how i can learn about it and then that's it went and did that for uh, one day it was the 26th of jan 2014 and they quite liked the work so they gave me another league in that that's how it started so that's how it started has your family always been that supportive when it comes to say education or uh, being in sports uh, being in front of camera and how's your childhood been like like has your family been a major uh, sports buff uh my mother has my mother has been an extremely uh, crazy sports buff my father has been ex- extremely crazy about developing our oratory skills so it was the perfect amalgamation uh, amalgamation you know so uh, yeah and childhood has been that i come from a very uh, uh, from a family that takes academics a bit too seriously so <laughs> education was, was was never like you know you have an option you have to be very well educated and not just like get a degree you have to do really well that was like a compulsion so we didn't me and my brother didn't really have an option i think my brother still had an option i didn't have an option so uh yeah and other than that for sports all the time like my uh, my parents i think had a rule that i when the sun is setting down i have to go down and play it was like a rule no matter kal jo bhi exam and all of that so yeah i mean I, that way my family is uh, very uh, progressive and you know i think they, they've got the right values in place because i would say everybody har kisi ko se bachcho ko khelne dena chahiye because it opens up your mind and everything so yeah my brother, brother actually uh, took up badminton very seriously he was uh, uh, training in badminton but then of course education is a priority so he <laughs> he went there but yeah he was actually training in badminton really well even i was playing a lot of badminton so yeah So come 2019, and you were hosting the men's cricket World Cup in England, which was certainly a grand affair. Followed by the 2020 Women's T20 World Cup, which was, of course, uh, for women's cricket fans, I'll say that was a very big thing. You were there on the ground both the times. Both the times, uh, India was present. Uh, once in the semi-finals, here at the finals. How were the experiences? The entire World Cup experiences. it was crazy it uh, i think it uh, has kind of you know given uh, me an opportunity that i never ever imagined the 2019 cricket world cup i had uh, hosted the india tour of england and india tour of australia but not in the capacity that i hosted the 2019 cricket world cup you know um so the i mean I, i'm just going to fall short of words to actually describe that experience but uh gave me a good break in cricket i would say that was actually my break in cricket 2019 cricket world cup um the fact that it was digital i uh, had a lot of opportunity to explore uh you know the true side of me uh be as free as possible as a presenter or you know i would call every presenter everybody is on camera an artist whether you're doing sports or not so as an artist i thought that it was as a performer i thought it was a great opportunity there was uh, i was very free i was given wings i could fly there were no restrictions so i thought a lot i, I think i was a lot more comfortable doing it so yeah uh, to do the 2019 world cup that to in the digital space that to along with icc uh, i really had to be very lucky to be doing that and of course then came the 2020 cricket world cup and uh, the 2020 uh, t20 women's cricket world cup had uh, i was working with on two sides i was working with an organization called pojo where i was hosting the stadium and also with icc where i was doing a bit of their digital details so that was an extremely good experience because you know i wouldn't say that the t20 cricket world cup was only for the women cricket fans it was for in general all the fans india had support from everybody who ju- who watches cricket everybody right um, uh, and the way india performed also throughout the tournament 
uh, just gave everybody all the more motivation to watch women's cricket. And in general, it was great display of skills and talent, and you know, great display of play. Australia did such a fantastic job of you know organizing the entire World Cup. Um, it looked great, and I was with Sojo, and I was hosting stadiums. And I remember the finals of the MCG. I was hosting an audience of 85,000 people live. Now that is a different experience altogether. You know, stage is stage, and TV and digital is very different. But once, as a person, as an artist, if you hosted stage, that is always the bigger high. So uh, I have never actually hosted such a huge audience in my life. And that too for you know India versus Australia happening in Australia at MCG. So uh, I think these two moments will be, or these two tournaments will be the most favorite tournaments in my life for a very very long time. So you recently posted a picture, I guess in January, showing what the decade has been for you. You posted a picture of 2010 and you showed what 2020 has been for you. How's been this learning curve? How's been this decade for you? It's been a decade of uh, major transition uh, from a nerd, a geek, uh, <laughs> all of those terms that you could probably use for me, uh, to uh, having a very, uh, you know, like SRL vision, like tunnel vision, to like uh, just like coming out of the scene and you know doing exactly what I wanted to do. I think everybody should experience that in their lifetime because it's like truly living. I think uh, in this decade, I have transitioned from uh, being uh, very sober, very uh, I'm still sober, but I'm <laughs> like uh, like like I said, like a geek to someone who started doing exactly what she wanted to do. I think it's been quite a transition. Uh, so we all know that the world of presentation, or the world of cricket, or the world of sports has been majorly dominated by males. How does it feel uh, to be a, a, a prominent figure in a male-dominated space? It's a it's a profession, so um, it's you treat it like a profession. Actually, honestly, I have never known it the other way. You know, I was in marine engineering. I told you, like twelve girls and twelve hundred boys. Uh, then fortunately, I came to an engineering college, which is of course all girls engineering college. So then uh, I was pretty comfortable. But uh, I mean, I was comfortable either way. Uh, then I came, went to R and D, and it was male dominated again. Uh, you know, I was like coding transmission to like automate trucks. I was in the vehicle space, so it was completely male dominated. So I don't know if I've known it the other way. It's always been male dominated. Men are friends now, so. <laughs> I mean, to the social media world, wherein you see a lot of praises, but then uh, a lot of shaming also. Yes, uh, there are its own pros and cons. Social media has, but ultimately, you reach out to a very wide range of audience. How's been social media to you? It's been great. I started uh, the 2019 Cricket World Cup as a digital presenter. Yes. So uh, it's. So if somebody is really asked, you know, going to ask me the cons, I will touch wood. I've seen the pros of it. Uh, the cons would be um, when you get trolled for, you know, uh, for some things which are, uh, you, which you, in your mind would be like, okay, it was not so serious. You know, people got very, very serious. I honestly have not reached that point yet in my career. Uh, it's uh, it's all all been like, uh, you know, good so far. So uh, yeah, the social media is. I think I am a digital baby. I'm a more of a digital baby. So yeah, I think it had a lot of pros for me. But of course, social media can be very intimidating also. So uh, yes, uh, we have talked a lot about uh, your stage, your own field presence, uh, something in front of the studio. But what a lot of people might not know is that you are an excellent voiceover artist also. You've done a lot of uh, advertisements at the same time. Uh, of course, going in front of camera is a different skill. Uh, but being uh, doing, doing voiceover for an advertisement is completely different. How's been that experience? Please share. Uh, it's it's that's where I started actually. Uh, you know, I did my uh, I did my internship with Radio Milchi, so 
that one thing that i'm very snobbish about is the fact that i think i have a good voice you know like <laughs> i just say it. i, I <laughs> yeah it is like i have a good voice so i want to make complete use of it so that's why i do a lot of voice overs you know the beauty about voice overs is that that uh, uh it's not just that about the texture or you know the gravitas of the voice but also the way you modulate your voice and you create an entire film and you create the entire ambience by just your voice so that's a it's a very different skill and uh, that's a very um, it's that requires a lot of uh, training and practice and a lot of people might not know this but when i came to bombay uh just to work on my voice i had to go dub i've done a lot of dubbing a lot of dubbing for uh english films a lot of dubbing for uh, you know english shows and various genres from you know like uh, something very passionate to something very uh, you know very hilarious comedy i've done it all so uh there was very close by the studio where i had to go dub and i think i learned a lot from that because you literally had to emote using just your voice because somebody already emoted that on the screen and you could come up with similar emotions with your voice so it has been a space where i really want to grow a lot more I really want to like explore the space even more. I don't think I've explored it enough. So uh, you have done basketball. You regularly do basketball. You have done cricket. You have done kabaddi. How's it working with different sports? Like there would be different learnings. There would be different experiences. I'm sure. Uh, how's that been for you? Uh, the basics are the same. You need to know the sport. You need to know camera. You need to know TV. The only thing that differs is the players. Uh, once you know the sport, I think uh, one thing that would probably differ is, you know, uh, different sports have different players who come from different backgrounds. So the way you would interact with them that would change. But other than that, the basic, uh, the basic hygiene of the sport and you know hosting. sports and life sport and broadcast is to say uh but the fact that i've done very sports and uh, nba is a totally different ball game because nba is the only sport in which i have hosted studio for so long other than or other than that all the sports have only been live on you know uh, on the court or on the field uh but nba i host a proper one one and a half hour studio show that's a different ball game uh but other than that if you talk about like starting to the sport and knowing the sport the basic uh, physics is the same yeah as you told the basics are same but uh, have there been different challenges and different learnings from the other sports when well, i started with hockey so uh, it was a great learning experience because that is where you know i trained my horses so um i think uh, i think the challenge in hockey probably was uh to develop myself as a hindi presenter uh i think that was the biggest challenge uh like uh, so i mean i was working with star at that time uh, as a hindi presenter so uh to like really like groom my hindi and you know i think that that was the i really i had to work on that space so same is the case with kabaddi i was again uh, hosting for shows in hindi so uh, hindi presenting actually we bahut mere bahut achhi khasi thi so uh it was that and uh, with the uh, nba it was actually more so about learning the sport and you know having that swag and style in your own self that uh, the sport presents it's a fast sport it's got this punk so as yeah, a presenter also you're supposed to be like that uh you're supposed to deliver in the same fashion so i think the delivery changed with every sport i think that was the uh, only challenge because uh the way you deliver should you know be in the same sentence as the sport is you know how how that sport is for me so i think that is the only challenge to hindi mein zyada maza aata hai ya english mein bolne mein to hindi mein zyada maza aata hai kyunki hindi mein kya hai ki aap bahut acche se emote kar sakte ho aur hindi mein itne amazing proverbs hain ki you know like tha ke maar maar ke aap you know you can like really like create that uh, uh, mahol and ambience hindi hindi zyada sundar hai so uh, a lot of people say that uh, they need a good face to be uh, in front of the camera or to be presenting uh, to the world whereas um, uh, i don't think that is needed a lot of course uh, you might get your first uh, chance uh, very quickly uh, but then sustainability also comes there 
so how do you see that and what would be your uh, take on it as well as what you would like to tell the audience you know i was uh, once doing a workshop and uh, the trainer told us something very beautiful that agar aap artist acche to apne aap camera pe sundar lagne lagte ho and it is a fact it is really a fact i mean look at nawaz and siddiqui for that matter uh look at rajkumar rao such brilliant artist and nobody is noticing anything else like for example shahrukh khan shahrukh khan himself made so much fun about him his own looks and uh, the kind of artist that he is and the kind of person that he is he i mean you know women are crazy about him so um yeah i think that if you really good at your job the camera does make you look good having said that uh because it's a visual medium you have to be presentable so i would say presentable is a fourth essential um because it just looks good the entire packaging looks great so uh yeah i mean you got to be presentable uh that the say that's the whole that's the whole point but i don't think it's all about look especially in sport it cannot be because if you don't have any content there is no way you will survive uh as female journalists or presenters what are the opportunities or uh the growth when it comes to sports as a medium say in india or globally also it's great especially if uh you know like um i mean there's a great space for women to explore uh broadcasters around the world are very encouraging uh and they want women to join in this space they want more and more women to come into sports especially in sports broadcasting it is a fact i have been around and they are hunting and how so uh yeah if you're good at uh at, at this profession this is the time and place to be so lots and lots of opportunities people willing to accept you with open arms so uh, there is nothing like you know it's male dominated and that's the reason why you don't have so much of opportunity rather i think if you're a woman you have a plus point because everybody wants you here so uh yeah i mean if you're good at what you're doing and if you're good at sports and if you're good at presenting this is the place you should definitely try i'm i'm definitely certain that you love to travel uh but i guess it's been your biggest break at home since uh say what 3 4 years uh easily yeah easily so uh, how's how's that make uh, how's that a difference uh, to how you normally are because normally sports presenters you continuously traveling either to the studio or to the field how's that uh, been a difference positives negatives It's been great, actually. Ha, uh, you know, like you get a lot of time to spend with family. Uh, so yes, but having said that, because I've literally been living out of the suitcase, I'm missing the suitcase. I think it's time to take it out for a spin. So yeah, I mean, uh, I I've actually had a lot of time to just stay at one place and you know, like introspect. It sounds very deep, but it is a fact that all of us have got this opportunity to introspect. and also kind of give importance to things that really matter which is family honestly so at the end of the day that really matters so yeah right now uh, we are all seeing that we are all at our homes but generally when you are going to a studio how's uh, how's that particular life outside the studio for you well uh, you know uh, if everybody knows this that you know i host the mba which happens like 4 am in the morning so uh and i'm done by say 10 am or 11 am so i have the entire day to myself so usually i also like uh, mc a lot of stage events so there might be like a stage event that i have to host like that evening or you know I have to travel to another city for that come back for mba in time because we shoot mba uh, on weekends so actually it's just a weekend weekend thing you literally have the entire week so my a lot of my time goes in hosting stage shows so preparing for that uh, that's a whole different ball game you know uh, it's, you got a it's a very different kind of a preparation so majorly time goes in that then you know like working out movies chilling with my brother um watching shows watching some cricket that kind of thing the regular dal chawal khao bhai <laughs> the regular mummy ke hath ka khana oh yeah i'm blessed like that <laughs> 
so you have had multiple one on one conversations with a lot of sports stars um, in all your experience which have been the most memorable say the top 3 the top 3 uh virat kohli number 1 first interview 2019 cricket world cup definitely the top first um number 2 uh it would be elis perry actually it was very special recently um, recently yeah it would be elis perry that was very very special so there was a time when uh, you know uh, i had the opportunity of being in the same car as mr saurav gangali and i will never forget that conversation ever it was uh it was these uh these advices that he was giving me about shaping my life and coming from him and the fact that you know he did that i will never forget that conversation but yeah that was a very very nice conversation with um a man who seemed to care and that was very special it was just just like a 15 minute drive it was from the stadium to the hotel and uh, it was beautiful uh so a colleague uh, you enjoy most working with who's been that colleague so manas i really like working with him he's got a great sense of humor uh he's fun to hang out with uh both of us are the nba and both of us have been like uh, working on the same sport for like 3 years now uh so yeah manas would be my top one and other than that i would really really want to host a show with mr harsha bhogle he is a lot of fun to be around and of course there's a lot of learning at the same time so if i ever get an opportunity to you know like go anchor anything with him i would really take him the drop of the hat <laughs> uh who has been your inspiration uh in the world of presenting uh alan wilkins okay number 1 uh he's been a great inspiration uh mr harsha bhogle of course uh great inspiration again uh ian bishop very very good commentator uh very very nice human being you know inspiration is not just about how you want to behave in front of the camera inspiration is also how you, how they behave behind the camera I think that is more inspirational. How well they get along with everybody, and you know how kind they are and generous they are. And I think Ian Bishop tops that list of mine. So yeah, these three are very very inspirational. So uh, yeah, any anecdotes you would like to share from your experiences or something? Stories? I I don't know. I would like to share something very funny. Like people think that you know presenting gets very serious, especially when you like post uh, sports. but sometimes there's a lot of uh, a lot of things happening around in the background like uh, you know there's so much noise happening in your in your piece while you're talking to someone very very special like i remember uh, i was hosting the uba and uh, it was a crew that had just you know flown down from uh, arizona and la and these were like really very well experienced people but at the same time super fun uh, you know my my director was like a five time emmy award winner so uh, I just like you know like we were just chilling on you know and they asked me that why didn't you like teach us some uh, uh, bad words in Hindi? So like uh, they asked me so I I thought okay I'll teach you some and uh, the next day uh, I'm gonna go live in one two three and they start saying all those words because they literally didn't know what the meaning was so they just went like so there is so much happening in the background while I'm having this very serious discussion with a player in front of me. So there are a lot of these things happening that you know sometimes sometimes uh, there are kind of goof ups that uh, as an anchor you make that you don't know how to make a comeback from. I remember I was hosting uh, the NBA one morning and uh, it was the thirty first had just gone by, and uh, I said that okay everybody let's go get up for the battle. And instead of the battle I said all right let's go get up for the bottle. <laughs> you know things like that that happen. But it's a, it's it's you know live broadcasting it can get super funny, very very funny. But then the thing is that you should know how to come out of it. That's the idea. As a human being, you are going to make mistakes, no matter who you are. But the idea is how you make a comeback from that. Right. I remember uh, Jatin very recently told me in this one Instagram live that I was doing with him that he said that uh, uh, I think he was uh, throwing to break uh, for uh, I think for, and he was talking about Sehwag and he said इन्होंने कई सारी पारियां खेली हैं पारियां की जगह उसने नारियां बोली. 
but then of course he's got some stuff through he made a great comeback from there so yeah i think we all make group up it's just that how do you handle that situation that's the, that is what is experience right uh, so let's uh, play a rapid fire uh, it's going to be this or that i'll give you okay. two choose one uh, so this or that mcg or one kid mcg Virat. I haven't hosted anything in Bangkade, so. Okay, <laughs> Virat or Dhoni. Dhoni. Food, North Indian or South Indian. South Indian. Studio or field. No comparison. So the next one is. Field, field, both are great. Basketball or cricket. Pass, 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 pass. <laughs> 2019 men's cricket world cup or 2020 women's t20 world ye kya yaar this 2019 men's cricket world cup because first break in world cup okay so yeah that's it for the day uh, thank you very much radhima it was an excellent show hosting you and i'm sure that uh, your story will be as inspirational and people will know a lot about what's happening in the background and people can pursue a lot more in the world of presenting in the world of being on the camera hosting a lot of shows uh, hosting sports and as she says that a lot of people are hunting so uh, yeah thank you very much uh, it was great having you it was pleasure having you thank you thank you so much yashan i think you did a fab job as a presenter and anchor